Hey and welcome back to Talon Gaming. Today we're going to be looking at Metro Exodus, a first person shooter developed by 4A Games and published by Deep Silver in 2019. Metro Exodus is a FPS at heart, but with a good dose of post-apocalyptic exploration and a stealthy survival horror twist, the third game in the series based on the Dmitry Gukovsky novels. Metro Exodus is set in the year 2035 after the events of the previous game Metro Last Night. After the Earth has been shredded by nuclear war, you again play the role of Archie Alm, who escapes the Moscow Metro on a multi-continent journey aboard the locomotive Aurora. Over the course of one year, Archie Alm, his wife Anna, and the Spartan Order face a variety of challenging missions. As in previous Metro games, this one has many unique features which help add to the post-apocalyptic theme. Things like gas masks with replaceable filters, radiation monitoring, and limited resources are just a part of daily life. This is a single player game consisting mainly of story driven linear missions along with some open world sandbox exploration. There's some side quests available as well which are just covered by interacting with other characters and uh, various overheard dialogue. If you're looking for more, there are two full DLC campaigns available as well. This one's available for Windows, PS4, Xbox One, Stadia, and Amazon Luna. There's a planned release for the new PS5 and Xbox systems, as well as the Mac and Linux versions sometime in 2021. A quad-core CPU with 8GB of RAM is recommended, as well as a mid-tier graphics card made in the last 5-6 to six years. You'll also need about 60 gigs of storage space for this one. There are quite a few different interesting features to Metro Exodus. First, you're going to need to loot various materials from dead bodies, buildings, desks, and containers of various size and shape. Once you have sufficient materials, you can build anything from ammunition, med kits, throwing knives, air filters, and other devices. Weapons, upgrades, and maintenance are very important. A variety of firearms to choose from include near-silent air guns, revolvers, submachine guns, assault rifles, and miniguns. Upgrades include stocks, noise and flash suppressors, as well as optics. Throwing knives, molotovs, and distraction devices are also things you can use. As you use your weapons, you also must clean them. Dirty guns have reduced performance and tend to jam a fair bit at exactly the wrong time. The environment is very interactive and quite realistic. Things like turning on and off lights, burning spider webs, uh, radiation and gas masks that use filters and require frequent replacement, and wiping of the glass. Usable switches, levers, elevators, doors, and locks. Manually recharging batteries for your night vision and flashlight. Gun jams, a minimal HUD, and things like holding your breath when the air is unbreathable. There's a wide variety of landscapes, one for every season. Frozen wastelands, subterranean, subway systems, bunkers, buildings, churches, cranes, desert, you name it. There's even a day and night cycle with changing weather conditions from windstorms to heavy rain and snow. You find quite a few different enemies to combat with. From humans that are bandits, soldiers, cannibals, any technology fanatics, to mutants and beasts, and even electrical anomalies. The textures and environment are very detailed and lifelike. The animations for the most part are very good and don't look weird or out of place. Cutscenes are quite frequent and come in a couple of different flavors. The standalone cutscenes, such as the introduction, are very, very nicely done and look really pretty. The in-game cutscenes are rendered seamlessly with gameplay and look excellent, just like the rest of the game. Sound effects and ambience are quite good and feel very realistic. From putting on and off gas masks, background noises, echoing sounds put out in enclosed spaces, it's, it's pretty impressive. The music is professionally authored by veteran video game composer Alexei Omolchuk. For the most part, the music is very quiet and non-intrusive, allowing the user to experience all the rest of the sounds in all their glory. The music is quite good when it does come on. If you search for it, there's even an available soundtrack. Voice acting, I feel like it's hit and miss. There's a few times where I feel it's very good, and other times I just don't feel like it lives up to the part. It's not a deal breaker, but the choice of wording and how they're portrayed can be a little comical at times. This is one place where I feel like the game comes up short, but it doesn't really take too much away from the overall experience. I mean, there's even a character called Idiot, and they refer to him about a hundred times throughout the game. It's hilarious, to be honest. I've heard that listening to the game in Russian actually provides a little more authenticity to the experience, but it's not something I've tried myself. The story is quite good, and with the novels and two preceding games, there's a fair bit of backstory here. 
For a standalone game, it still provides enough context to make the game sensible. Throughout the game, Archeom's commentary between sections adds depth and promotes character attachment, while the cutscenes and steady dialogue throughout the game continue to add to the overall story arc. The gameplay for the most part is at a steady but meandering pace. There are some faster paced portions to play through, but that steady pace does allow you to absorb the overall presentation and not focus solely on pulling the trigger. The game is fun with a few sections that were a bit frustrating and required me to load save games and try again until I was able to survive. Frustrating at times, but never impossible. <laughs> The game is extremely immersive and requires thought and planning before proceeding. There isn't an ever-present HUD or map overlay to guide you through, and you'll need to keep tabs on your ammunition, your weapons, map, and even your supplies. You'll need to make sure to throw on your gas mask when you need it, and change the filter periodically. The ammunition isn't plentiful in this one, so again, playing carefully. What you'll find here is a predominantly linear style of delivery. There are some portions of open world sandbox play where you can explore a bit more, but the play is mostly guiding you towards the end goal. I will mention that the controls are fairly complex for a shooter. They are well thought out, but you won't simply run and gun through the game, so take a minute to look at the key bindings. Personally, I had to set up my Logitech RGB keyboard with color-coded keys to make it a bit easier to handle. Exodus should take the average player 20 to 30 hours to complete, more so if you do the side quests or look at any of the DLC. So while it's not a long game, you'll certainly get good value from the title, especially when it's on sale, as this title is still three quarters of the price of a new AAA title. If you're into challenges, you might get some extra replay value from this one, but seeing as it's going to be much of the same, mostly linear gameplay, I'm not sure I would be playing it through it more than once. The DLC does look promising if you're looking into some extra content though. I had fun with the game and enjoyed the overall experience. The sounds, scenery, and story are all quite good. If you enjoyed the first two games and are looking to expand on that, this is a safe bet. For everyone else, if you like slower paced first person shooters, post apocalyptic adventures, pretty graphics, or are looking for something different, you'll surely enjoy this one. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed the review. I'm looking forward to hearing about what you think of the game and the review in the comment section. As always, if you enjoyed the video, throw us a like to let us know. This is Chris from Talon Gaming, signing out.